The Weekly starts now. I'm Denise Durson, Executive Editor of ProBuilder, and I'd like to welcome Chris Hartley, Vice President of Sales for the Dallas-Fort Worth Division of k Hobnanian. Thanks for joining me today, Chris. I appreciate you having me. Chris, you've been in new home sales since 2003, so you've definitely seen some ups and downs. But all that we've gone through since early last year is, I think, pretty different from the norm. Can you give us your perspective on some of the issues new home salespeople are facing now? Yeah, I mean, gosh, it's one, it's hard to believe I've been doing this since 2003, you know, 17 years now. Uh, I interviewed someone the other day that was 25, and I got to thinking, wow, I've been doing this way longer than I, that I've given myself credit for. And starting in 2003 in a small market like Kansas City and now being in Dallas, Texas, just a very different time. And when I started in 2003, the market started to pick up. You know, we, we started to go up 2003, 2004, 2005, 2006. I was able to see a really good run of sales. And, you know, when I started in 2003, homes were $140,000. We were still writing contracts. And for some people that listen to this, some of the young people, we wrote contracts. We had to push really, really hard because it was carbon paper. And we had to get that contract to bleed through to six different sheets. And today it's just very, very different. But I've been very blessed in my career to actually do this in five different states. And one of the locations that I was able to be in new home sales was Phoenix during the recession. And I look at that as probably some of the best times I've ever had in home building because it was one, extremely humbling. And two, I just grabbed a, a, a great sense of knowledge out of that. And the knowledge that I gained was that it's okay to be afraid in tough times. But as a leader, it's not, it's not okay to be or stay afraid in tough times. When you look at that, you know, when I got to Phoenix in 2008, I had 22 salespeople. And in a very short amount of time, we cut that down in half. And our homes were losing value, was seemed like daily. And it was just a very difficult time in the market. But we recovered. You know, I ended up in Dallas in 2011, and the market has been really strong ever since. But what we're seeing since COVID occurred in March of last year, it's just so different. None of us that have been in the business, no matter whether it's been five years, one year, 40 years, had ever seen anything like this. And what we're seeing today in regards to price appreciation and throttling of sales and putting every community on a restriction and every two sales gets a price increase and our lumber costs are extremely high and really an unknown of what's going to happen, both with interest rates and with costs and how long are the buyers going to keep going the way they are. Salespeople today are in a completely different world than they've ever been. And depending upon your experience, and really, let's be real, regardless of your experience, there's a lot of questions out there. Those are some pretty big challenges. What can they do to handle them? Yeah, you know, it's they are pretty big challenges and they're big challenges for prospects and they're big challenges for our own employees as well. And I want to answer that question in a very uh, unconventional way. I want to tell a story. And everybody loves a story, but this story is even better because it's a real story. And it's a personal story to myself. It's a story for my team because here in DFW, we are taking rapid price increases. I'm up on average forty to $60,000 in the last 90 days across all of my communities. But what's fascinating about this is that when I started price increasing, my team said, I can't sell at this price and they sold. And then we price increased. I can't sell at this price and they sold. I can't sell at this price and they sold to the point where we are selling more homes than we can build. And this is not a common, an uncommon thing for builders across the United States today. This is happening to every home builder in every location. But there's a better way to tell the story. And so for me personally, I was, I was coloring with my little girl Harper the other day and we were coloring on her little desk and she looked at me and she said, daddy, I just love our house. And I said, Harper, I love that you love the house. What do you love about it? And she said, I love my room and I love the pink walls, and I love all the unicorns, and I just love everything about it. And I said, well, you have no idea how happy that makes dad to hear that you love the house. Now, from a dad's standpoint, and if any of you are parents, a house to your children, it's so special. It's a special, special place, and it's this place that you make a lot of memories in. And so I had a situation happen recently where a former employee, uh, an employee left, and I, I personally picked up 
the home buyer and the realtor because there was a relationship there with the realtor from the past. And in talking to the husband, the husband's name is Caleb. He, he let me know that the house that he is purchasing with his wife was really important and special to him because his wife had never lived in a home before, ever, her entire life, never lived in a house. Yeah, okay. And he said, Chris, he goes, I just want to make sure that this is the best experience possible for her. And I, I just really, really love that because this man, it wasn't about him. It was about his wife and about the journey that he wanted her to go on and experience. And so he reached out to me and he let me know. He said, hey, can you meet me on a weekend? Now, I'm a VP of sales. I typically don't meet customers on the weekend, but he was very persistent. I said, sure, not a problem. I, I will meet you out there. Happened to be that that community is about an hour away from my own personal house. And so in fairness, I was a little irritated by the fact that I was taking time away from the family on a weekend to go walk a house. And it was a really bad mindset to have. And I had to clear my mindset and say, you know what, if it wasn't for these type of buyers, I wouldn't have a job. Now, when times are going really, really well, we oftentimes forget that it's people that keep us employed. Now, in the bad times, we remember that it's people that keep us employed, but in the good times, we need to be reminded of this as well. And so I walked into this home and the first person I met was Courtney, which was the wife. And she was absolutely adorable. And she was so excited to see me. And she goes, are you Chris? And I said, I am. And she goes, I'm so happy you're here in our new home. And I was like, yes, I'm happy to be in your new home too. And she just had the best story for me. And she told me that where all of her family was going to sit and the meals that they were going to have and where all this furniture was going to go. And she said, I don't know if Caleb told you or not, but this is the first time I've ever lived in a home. I'm so excited. And I said, Courtney, I'm going to tell you something. The very first conversation I had with your husband, he made sure I knew that this was the first time you ever lived in a home. And he made sure that I was very well aware that this was going to be an amazing experience for you. And I hope that it has been. And she's like, I'm just over the moon excited for everything. And then she led on to tell me that she has a grill that she bought for him. That's going to be a surprise on the day that they close. And it was just really amazing to see how happy somebody was going through the process of buying a home with my company and I'm a part of it. And it was a really good reality check for me that I was able to hear how much Harper loved our house to how much uh, Courtney loved her house with Caleb and what it meant to them. And so I asked my team, you know, we, we took a pretty significant price increase. I, I met with Caleb and Courtney on a Sunday. We took a significant price increase on Monday. And I held a virtual sales rally with my team and I was telling the story of Harper and I was telling the story of Caleb and Courtney. And I started asking my own personal team because I have a team of a lot of young, amazing humans. And I said, uh, Christina, you're closing on your home on Tuesday with your, with your husband and, and your four-year-old son. What does that home mean to you? And she got so excited and she's like, this is the first time my son has ever lived in a house. You know, we've been in an apartment. Now I've lived in a house growing up before. And she goes, I'm not like Caleb and Courtney, but this is the first time my son will live in a house. And I'm so excited that he's going to have a yard. And then I asked some other people on my team and I said, Nia, you know, you're, you're fairly young. You've been in the business a very short amount of time, but you've done extremely well. What are you most looking forward to about buying a house? And she said that she couldn't wait for her parents to be proud of her for the accomplishment that she had. And so I asked another guy on my team, I said, Kyle, why do you want to buy a home? And he's like, it's such an accomplishment to be able to say, why don't you come to my house? And another person on my team said, you know, when you go to the store and they ask you what your address is and they ask you the apartment number, I can't wait to say, no, I own my house. I don't live in an apartment. It's the little things that you don't really think about that we as people that are in home building get to do, which is sell a dream. We get to make a dream come true. And so I asked all of them, I said, well, let me ask you this. I said, do you think that people, you know, what, what series do people think of a new home in? And I said, first, it starts out as a dream, right? You dream of owning a home. And second, it becomes a goal that you wish to obtain. So do you think that their dreams or their goals are changed if their dream and their goal now costs $50 more, $100 more, $200 more? They don't. They don't care because to them, it's a dream. It's a goal. It's a dream. And it becomes reality. So the small increase of $50, $100, whatever it may be, 
per month because you had to raise prices is actually irrelevant. It's only relevant if you make it relevant. And so get the price increase out of your mind as a sales counselor and go back to asking the question, why are you guys looking to move to begin with? And what has changed in your life that has you here today? Because as my friend Jeff Shore says, there's no better time to change your life than today. And that's true, regardless of what the interest rate is. I mean, my parents bought a house in Tinley Park, Illinois in 1984 at 14.5% interest rate. It didn't matter. They still bought a house because it was a dream, right? So the interest rate is irrelevant. The payment is irrelevant. Yes, I understand people have to qualify. I get that. But the fact of the matter is that people are inside of your sales offices to accomplish their dreams. And so we as salespeople get to sell dream boxes, right? We, in essence, sell a box that is going to be full of memories and full of dreams. And we need to take appreciation for what we do and stop focusing on the negative because we have the coolest jobs in the entire world. And when I told my team this this story and this sales rally, they were blown away. And it it was funny because it wasn't blown away because what I had to say was profound by any way. They They were blown away because it was so easy. Right. Nothing, nothing I ever teach is is genius by any means. It's just common sense and it's easy. But when you step back and you realize, like, how would you look at it? How do you how do you approach a goal? How do you approach a dream? And is fifty dollars going to stop you? It's not going to stop you. So we just have the best jobs in the entire world. I really believe that we do. I mean, who else in the world gets to sell a a house or a product that people are going to grow up in? Their kids are going to say their first words and walk their first steps and go to kindergarten and stand on the front step and hold the sign that says first day of school. Like we get to do that. We are part of their lives. Now we may sell hundreds of homes in our career and we may not remember everybody, but I promise you they're going to remember you. And you have to take that responsibility very seriously and just appreciate it for what it is. And the beautiful part of it is every single one of them is going to feel that way. There's, there's no one that walks into a, a, a model home or look, you know, any, you know, any uh, sales opportunity like this and says, you know, things to themselves, oh, you know, it's another day I'm buying a house. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's just it's, not it's, that way. It's for real. It's for real. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, that is a great story. And that's, that is certainly something that uh, I think uh, salespeople can, can bear in mind and, and really feel good about as well as, you know, uh, telling themselves and their customers, you know, why it's important and when, why the price doesn't, you know, isn't something that should hold them back. Absolutely not. I'm so, you know, it kind of goes back to that old saying where, um, where you're competing, you know, let's say you're competing with the, with the neighbor next door and you both have similar houses, but your house is $20,000 more, but your customer likes your house better. Ask the question, if all things were the same, if price was not an issue, which home would you prefer to live in? And if they choose to prefer to live in yours, then ask the question, do you really feel for $140 a month that you'd be comfortable driving past the house you really wish to live in every yeah. day? Yeah. Is, that, is that really what you want? Do you want to raise your family in your second choice? Because I don't know about you, nobody ever wants to be settled upon. Nobody ever wants to be second choice in anything. Yeah. So let's take the price objection away and go back to the reason of why they're buying to begin with. And it just makes everything so much easier. Wow. Well. That is that is great advice. That's a that's a great uh, great way to approach this, Chris. And I really appreciate your taking the time to to be on on this uh, call with us today. Thank yeah, you so well, much. I appreciate you always, and thank you for everything you've done for me. Oh, my pleasure. Mm-hmm.